Hello guys, myself Ankita. Today in this video, we shall see another problem. Find the pivot integer. So given the positive integer n, find the pivot integer x such that the sum of all the elements between 1 and x inclusively equals the sum of all the elements between x and n inclusively. So return the pivot integer x. If no such integer exists, return minus 1. It is guaranteed that there will be at most one pivot index for the given integer. So the work given question is, if you are given an integer 4, or let's say let's take the same example 8. So the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. They said if the given integer is n, the pivot integer is x such that Sum of all the integers, sum of all the elements between 1 and x inclusively. Um, here it is 6, right? So let's see, this is the 6. So 1 and 6 till here. Sum of all the integers is nothing but 20. 3 plus 3, 6, 10, 15, 21. In, so 1 and x inclusively, x is inclusively, equals the sum of all the elements between x and n inclusively. x and n, x to n, n is nothing but 8. So again, do this. So that is, this would give you 8 plus 15 plus 6, 20. So they are equal. Right? So we have to find this x value. And this x value is called as pivot integer. So basically pivot integer is nothing but if they are given an integer n. Uh, the range from 1 to n. There are some integers that, such that the sum of all the elements from 1 to that integer is equal to sum of all the elements from that integer to till the n. N value. So, what's the approach to solve this problem is at first we need to find the sum of all the elements in the array. Uh, sum of all the elements we will say with a sum. Next, what you have to do again run the follow. One, uh, one, when, you run, when you run the follow, uh, you keep one, one more variable called someone that will find the sum at each iteration. Like, for i equal to 1, this sum is someone equal to 1. For i equal to someone equal to 1 plus 2, 3. So this will get updated. So each time when you find someone, for example, someone here, let's take this is someone that is 3 plus 2 plus 1, 6. Then compare it with the other sum. How do you compare it with the other sum? We have the sum, right? So this sum is something but entire sum. minus this sum there's nothing but someone but with the inclusive of x we need so plus i can do. i means we run the fall from i equal to 0 to n right so plus i got it so here is 1 2 3 4 and here is the x value this is the entire sum this is someone how to find the remaining sum from x to this? Uh, nothing but sum minus sum 1. It will delete of 2 also, but we need that. So plus i. So well, you check whether sum 1 is equal to equal to sum minus sum 1 plus i. If they are equal, then you just return the i. So it's a simple program. We'll just code this. So in sum equal to 0. Let's find the sum. We learn the for loop int i equal to 1. Why i equal to 1? Because they are given an integer n that will range from 1 to n. So let's start with i equal to 1. i less than or equal to n. Equal to n we should give because the last integer must be considered. You cannot give just less than n. Then, yeah, after that, i plus plus sum plus equals. So this will give you total sum. So once this is done, now again in sum one equal to zero. Why do we need this in sum one? At each iteration, we have to find the sum and you compare it with the remaining uh, uh, elements or remaining sum. So again, run the follow for in i equal to z i equal to one. You have to start sorry i less than or equal to n and i plus plus. Now to check if this someone 
that is nothing but left part sum so that is equal to right part sum remaining element sum that is nothing but equal to equal to sum minus sum 1 plus i you get this thing sum minus sum 1 plus i if they are equal you just return the i that pivot integer right? i will be quantity pivot which i equal to 2 because we are running the follow up with the index case index as 1 not 0 percent so you just need to return the i if none of this case happen that's written minus 1 so return minus 1 anything else okay we shall run this For n equal to 8, what's the simple mistake which I did? Can you please check? Equal to i sum equal to someone. Yeah, at first we have to compute someone, no? someone plus equals to someone plus i. We should do that. That is nothing but uh, someone plus equals i. Only after this you find the sum at each iteration. Like initially someone equal to one, then someone equal to three, someone equal to six, someone equal to ten, so so on. That is required. So now we'll run this. Fine. I hope you guys have understood the problem. There are many other ways to solve this problem as well. This is one of the optimal approach. So if you have it out, please drop down in the comment section. We'll come up with another video in the next session. And, and please subscribe to the channel and keep learning. Thank you.